Welcome to HR Voices. A podcast for independent HR and people professionals and the businesses they support. HR Voices is brought to you by the expert team at HR Independence Limited. We hope you enjoy. Hi everyone, welcome to HR Voices podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Mary Asante. With me here, I've got my co-host, Charlotte Offrey. Today, we've been joined by Scott, Chris Scott. Chris is one of the directors of Accelerate Global. And we are going to be discussing a very interesting and exciting topic, a build on our very first episode, Flexible Working. Now, Chris's organization, Accelerate Global, has implemented flexible working. So we thought it's appropriate to have a conversation around how you can practically implement flexible working within your organization. And then we'll explore some of the challenges that comes with implementing flexible working. And then we'll try and give you some top tips as to how you can actually implement it. Uh, As usual, we will share how you might be able to contact us. And if you have any further questions for Chris, then we'll be able to put you in touch with him. So, right. Chris, welcome to our podcast. And uh, um, please, for the purposes of anyone who will be listening or tuning in today, can you please introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about Accelerate Global? Yes, of course. Thank you. So, yeah, I'm Chris Scott. I'm one of the founders and I'm the learning lead and the director at Accelerate Global. And we are a people-based consultancy specialising in the learning and development environment. And we work across the globe. And our whole ethos is really to try and create workplaces where people can be themselves, do their best work, do something that means something for them and then obviously the businesses they're part of can then reap the reward of that so that's really what we do and we do that digitally face-to-face environments like this all of those kind of things a real blended approach now to learning and micro learning as well is one of the new things that's coming through excellent thank you for that chris flexible work and i always say means very different things to different people And so we'll be interested to know what flexible working means to accelerate and then your employees. Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of, it's a great call, isn't it? It does mean something completely different to everybody. So when we looked at what we were doing, we were fairly flexible in the traditional sense of the word anyway, in terms of hybrid, working from home, all of those different elements mostly driven by the pandemic, because before that we were entirely office based. We, very rarely worked from home and actually we just looked at what was going on and thought you know what a lot of our clients in particular are very interested in exploring where we take flexible working so we looked at everything that was going on and we decided that flexible working for us would start to include a four-day week and how that might work and we didn't really know how to approach it which I'm sure we'll come to a little bit later But that for us was really important that actually we wanted, having discovered what life could be like during the pandemic and how much value some additional time and that flexibility of how we approach it, the value that brings, it's something that we really wanted to explore. And everyone that we work with here at Accelerate also thought the same thing. So it was a very open conversation to start with. But for us, flexibility is a reduced working week still with the flexibility to work wherever we need to work. Can I, can I just ask how, how you sort of got past that mindset of, you know, because it obviously it's a real challenge, isn't it, to change from a very traditional working format, working week format. And some of the things we hear from some of the other people we talk to about it is a real fear of that change and moving from perhaps being time-based and time-led to being outcome-led and objective-led and I think there's a real worry about how the work gets done, you know, and how you know. 
Yeah, and we shared that concern because we were worried, particularly as we're client facing all of the time, we were thinking, gosh, how do we pitch this to our clients to say, oh, do you know what, there's going to be a day a week where you're probably not going to be able to get hold of the person you want to get hold of. So actually, we had to do a lot of thought around that. And there was a genuine fear that it might impact how we were able to serve our clients, because we've always been very passionate about how we do that. We're here for them right the way through the week normally. So that was one concern. And there were worries around workload, around are we going to try and crown what we do? So would quality drop? all of those different things. So it was really a conversation between all of us and we kept that channel open all of the time. It was literally a daily conversation. The challenges we were facing, the fears we had, how we were overcoming it, uh, because we all recognised that to make it work and we all wanted it to work, it wasn't just a vanity project or anything like that. There was real value in it. We decided we had to be that open and face those challenges document them and do something with them so that actually our learning can benefit everybody else so when they're concerned we can say yeah we were the same but (laughs) and then offer some kind of solution for them excellent that is really interesting I think we all underestimate sometimes the role that communication play in any changes that we go through and any sort of organization-wise, everything that we may want to implement, communication plays such a huge part of it that sometimes we do underestimate it. And I I do think sometimes when it comes to flexible working and yours, like you said, the hot potato four-day working week, I think for most employees, that is heaven, absolutely. I'd like to be able to work four days have especially my Friday or for my Monday or so that I can have a long weekend. So how have you gone about implementing the four-day working week at Accelerate Global? Okay, yeah, brilliant. So we trialled it, first of all. We decided we'd go for a three-month trial to give it a really fair crack and to really see if we can identify every possible thing that could go wrong or be a challenge or would make it difficult to achieve. And we decided right from the beginning that it would be 80% hours rather than extended working days, still for 100% pay. So that was the prerequisite, really. It was like, we mustn't compromise on our lives on the four days that we are at work. And we had different, we had a bit of a benchmark around how productive we thought we were at the beginning so that we had something to measure at the end of it and it's very much a finger in the air how do you feel type measure (laughs) but actually it did come through the productivity did actually get much better and the quality of work didn't get compromised at all we had all of those initial thoughts around okay from a client perspective we do still need to be available to some degree five days a week so actually that suggested maybe a roster system so we would take it in turns to work Fridays just to have someone in the office someone to answer the phone someone who could respond to anything that came in and actually we then decided from there that it was only fair that if you were working that Friday because that's the day that we decided would be the easiest for most people to take off and extend the weekend that if you were working that Friday then you'd have the Monday of the same week off instead so that every working week always added up to four, no matter where you were in that roster pattern. And before you had to work a Friday, you got the weekend before with four days. So it was a very easy sell to everybody at that point that they would be able to do that. We committed on all of our social channels, primarily LinkedIn, to keep people updated with what we were doing and to be really honest about the challenges that we were facing. Because one of the things we discovered in our research is that Everybody was saying it was amazing, it was brilliant. And we're like, no, in reality, there's got to be something that isn't right. And actually, no one's talking about that. So let's, you know, put our people consultancy cap on now and let's share actually where we struggle with it. And we did a journal every Friday, ironically, where we shared all the challenges we'd had that week, the things that went really well that week, and actually what we were planning to do as a result. So some of the biggest hurdles we faced were things like holidays, because we had people that wanted to book holiday and then because we were maintaining an element of flexibility in the trial we think well how do we guarantee that friday off if someone we suddenly need to bring someone in or something like that but actually 
that turned out not to be an issue anyway. That was all fine. We had lots of challenges around getting used to the rosters. We had someone who forgot not to come in on a particular day. All of those different things, because those habits are what really need to be and, and, and adapted. So we literally, we've still got actually the notes, and it's all on our chat on our social channels as well, of every Friday, things that had happened. But it was generally around... There were a few Fridays where some of us had to work in the beginning because it was quite last minute that we put the trial in. Uh, mm. So we still had some diary commitments that obviously we're not going to turn around to clients and say we're not doing that now. Um, yeah, exactly. So for most of the trial, I didn't actually get a four-day week. So I have ever since. But uh, yeah, it was quite interesting how those diaries worked out. So many challenges, so many obstacles. And actually one of those obstacles was also the perception of managing clients who seem to, they all seem naturally to say, actually, we really need a call on Friday. And suddenly we had loads of calls coming through for Fridays and we we're like, hang on, what's happened? I don't know what's going on, but a little bit of conversation. And because we have such good relationships with our clients anyway, we've shifted most of them. And we also guaranteed within our team that we'd still be flexible. So, you know, if a client really needs a call on a Friday morning, yeah, we'll hop onto a call. It's not the end of the world. It's not going to happen all the time. So if it does, just as we'd be flexible any other day of the week or weekend, depending on where we're working, it wouldn't be an issue. And yeah, all of those things really just added to the value that the trial gave us. Because I think we ironed out ooh, a good 99% of the challenges that we faced. And some we just accepted that we'd live with. Yeah. Excellent. I think that's almost like doing a risk assessment, isn't it? And then the, what you just described, what you accept is your residual risk, the way you've looked at your business and you go, this is the risk that we can live with as a business. And then you mentioned earlier on that it has been successful. So, so tell us about some of the successes and how you've actually gone about measuring it to actually demonstrate that, yes, for the working week can work for organizations if implemented right, if you plan it, if you put a trial in place, if you're very open communicating with your workforce and also working through some of the challenges that come to light whilst you're going through your trial phase. Yeah, so definitely productivity. I'm not going to say it's increased because we were by my own admission and my own boasting, quite productive anyway, but it's not dropped for sure. And, and the quality is certainly absolutely still on point when it comes to what we do for our clients. And actually the benefit really comes through from what we're hearing, what we're seeing. We're seeing, uh, in fact, I don't think we've had any absenteeism. We didn't have a great deal before anyway, but because we had all sorts of things in place, like one-off rejuvenate days and all sorts of things. So we've always been quite pro well-being and understanding the importance of if you're in a good place then actually your work's going to be great and you're going to want to do it as well but actually this has just really reinforced that so the value we hear in stories of what people have been able to do with the additional days the balance that's given them the relief that gives people in terms of flexibility coupled with how we've made the framework work for us I think the key is to keep that conversation open and to really listen to what everybody is saying and also to listen to what they're not saying as we would always do in the people sector really understanding what is driving them and actually that value of that additional day seems to have been the clincher and i know you know we've spoken to lots of clients some people are looking at doing maybe a nine day fortnight or you know a shorter month but not able to commit to the four day week scenario and that's great because they're still considering different ways to give a little bit more flexibility to the people that work in their teams it's not right for everybody we're very lucky that we've got a lot of committed people here who give absolutely everything monday to thursday or tuesday to friday depending what part they're on it's just that ongoing conversation. So if someone came to us tomorrow and said, actually, you know what, this bit isn't working for me, we'd go straight back into our trial mentality and we'd work out what we can do. It's not set in stone. We have gone as far now as it's been so successful that it's now in our employment agreements. So it's now part of our terms and conditions. 
And as part of everything that we did with the four day week, we whipped all that up as well. So we started again because it was all driven by that freshness of being that progressive employer that was looking for flexibility and looking actually to support people to thrive rather than just go to work Monday to Friday every week, same old bringing that in. So each of the challenges, you know, productivity, no concerns about for us at all. Still a very tight knit team, still full of collaboration, full of support for each other. But actually, you can get a real sense in the office of the energy that actually the four day week brings, because we're literally firing on all cylinders for those four days that we're together. And it really is noticeable that the work is just much more enjoyable, much more fun. And we all have even more to talk about on a Monday because we've had three days of weekend. (laughs) Brilliant, isn't it? I mean, I think the real difference, actually, I mean, you've gone about it in a very positive way. Because I think when people sort of start to talk about the four day week, there is an assumption perhaps that that's going to be compressed hours, which that makes those four days that you do work very hard work and they're very long days. And actually that could be counterintuitive to what you're trying to achieve. And of course, what you've done is protect salaries at 100 percent, which, again, is a real benefit for your team, isn't it? Because they've not lost any of their salary, but they're, you know, and they've dropped to four days a week. So I would imagine that's put you in very good stead. And I'm assuming probably it's really implementing, helping you implement your recruitment strategy and your branding as a business. Yeah, completely. We all know what the talent pool is like at the moment. It's stretched beyond belief. So as employers, we have to be doing things that make us much more attractive than our competitors. It's as simple as that. And because we were the people we decided right from the start, because we were going to be leading on this rather than following when everyone else has done it, we knew that would be really great for protecting our recruitment in the future because we'd be able to say, actually, we did it before it was famous. <laughs> and um, We tried it, we got it working, and actually now we really know what we're talking about. And we were very conscious of exactly that point, that if we were going to go for compressed hours, that would be absolutely counterproductive and we'd be even more exhausted by the time we got to our day off that it wouldn't really matter. So... We were very, very protective of that. And I also, now with the benefit of hindsight, that element of productivity that worries people and you know, protecting that 100% salary is a real challenge for people sometimes. But all I can do is sit here and say, we are producing the same quality, the same amount uh, with the same, or in fact, even more energy than before. So actually we're still earning 100% of our salary. We're just doing it in a focused set of hours rather than stretching it over five. So as an employer, I can now stand stand very confidently and say 100% pay for 80% hours. Actually, it's 100% pay for 100% productivity. The hours are almost irrelevant. And I think that is very important. I think most employers do worry about if I'm going four day a week, I think some are okay with the maths around it's 100% of the hours spread across four days. But actually, if it's, I'm going down to 80%, but I'm paying them the same, then effectively people are getting a pay rise and working less. And I think most employers, then the alarm bells go up. But from what you're saying, actually, having reduced the number of hours to 80%, People are still very productive. Their energy levels are much higher. And then you haven't seen any drop in productivity. You have actually seen what that it, in terms of absence, et cetera, it's also gone low because people will probably factor in things that they may have taken time off work to do during the five-day working week. They will schedule those things for their day offs. So it doesn't really interfere with their working hours. And because they know they need to be productive, they need to get their work done over that four day period. They pretty much become quite focused when they come into work or when they are working remotely or however they may be delivering their service to your clients. So that is really important. And I think one of the things you talked about kept almost a journal of, of some of the challenges that you faced. What would you say were the top three challenges you faced when you're trying to implement it? 
Oh, wow. Okay. So first challenge was because we did the trial so quickly was our existing diaries because we're a very busy consultancy, thank goodness. Um, And there was a lot scheduled for Fridays. There was a lot of facilitation scheduled. There's a lot of meetings scheduled, a lot of project work scheduled. So we had to see that through. So that was a big challenge. And it almost felt at the beginning of the trial, it felt a little bit disingenuous that we're, like, we're doing a four day week and actually well, in reality, we're probably not. We're doing maybe four and a half if we're on a good day and maybe five in a bad week. But that soon settled element of challenge. And number two, I would say was actual workload. It did take a while for us all to change the way our minds were working to focus in those four days. We picked it up very quickly, but at the beginning, it was definitely a challenge with the amount of work that we all had. And it was almost a worry that we wouldn't get it done rather than an actual risk of it not being done. If that makes any sense, it was more a psychological stuff happening that uh, that was just creating that and the third one was the actual roster itself so we did it in a very fair way we just drew names out of a hat and you had a week one week two week three week four week five as it was to start with having a five day a five week roster was the biggest challenge for us so we soon changed that when we went permanent four day week we changed it to a one in four pattern rather than a one in five because it was getting very confusing. Whereas one in four sits in your diary much more easily. So we were very clear around what that looked like. And then, you know, working out all the stuff that went with that in terms of pro rata holidays. You know, in exchange for 52 extra days off a year, there are other things that you have to then reflect in that. So, you know, you're already getting 52 days off plus your holidays plus bank holidays plus we give Christmas break off as well we had to be very careful that actually we still managed that and we put in a a whole season a a whole section of guaranteed four day week days so that actually if you're booking a holiday and you needed the Friday or the Monday that was on your roster you just put a little marker on it and nothing else changes in that period right okay so did the holidays also stay at 100 percent or did that drop to holiday entitlement drop to 80%? So holiday entitlement has dropped to 80% based on the fact that they get the 52 extra days. Plus we do other various bits and pieces that give days off too. And we didn't just do that. We involved everybody and we said, what do you think is fair to the business and to us? And actually it was unanimous that, yeah, holiday entitlement would have to be prorated, which is kind of where we thought it would go. But yeah, I think it works out something like 20 days actual holiday entitlement plus 52 days plus bank holidays plus all the other bits and pieces so it's still a very healthy well-being package absolutely so going back to your point around how everybody felt about the sort of the dropping back to four days I always think it's quite interesting if you had to have a word with anyone to say to them stop doing stuff on a Friday because we're so conditioned aren't we to work a five-day week and we feel guilty and particularly when you run a small business you feel guilty when you've got downtime because you think there's so many things I should be turning my hand to and I should be doing so have you had to have a word with anyone and ask them to stop working yes absolutely so certainly at the beginning every now and again now but we've got even we've adopted the we've adopted the thought that actually our flexibility also needs flexibility so you know if you need to do something let's just have a chat about why and and why it's got to be done at that point and and so on and we accept that sometimes we might have to step into something on a Friday and that's okay we did have to have a few words with people who seem to still be working five days a week at the beginning and we were like hang on a minute this isn't working then is it if we're saying we're promising you something and then you're actually in reality doing something else then what's not what's not right what's not working what's getting in the way because your day off is equally as valuable as anybody else's and I just want to understand why so we can make it happen for you the biggest person that I had to have a word with was me (laughs) (laughs) why am I not surprised at that (laughs) as a director and as a you know if email comes in I must do that now because this is business this is our livelihood this is everything people are depending on me I've moved out of that mindset now and I'm much more no it can wait till Monday it's only a day Or actually, is there someone in the office today who can do this? And that's fine. I'll just forward it on and and that's that's all good. 
again, flexibly wise, from my perspective, I'm never going to let something go if it's really important and really urgent. But generally, myself and my co-founder, David, we were the same. We were working the Fridays regardless because we just wanted to make sure everything was okay. We're both out of that now and we're very settled into our four-day week. Excellent. Thank you very much. Before we bring this episode to an end, what would you say are your top five tips for for anyone who's thinking about implementing flexible work and more importantly, a four-day working week? My first number one tip would be get everybody talking. So get everybody involved and really listen to what it is they're saying and what they're telling you because actually unless you've got all of your people thinking the same thing or at least feeling that their concerns or thoughts or even aspirations have been listened to then it won't work because this has got to be it's got to be collaborative because we've got to equally we've all got to make a commitment to do all of our work in four days so yeah the commitment like we were saying earlier the understanding that you know if I've got a dentist appointment or something like that I try and make it for the day that I've got off rather than then adding it to additional time if it's not possible of course we never tell people they can't go to the dentist or anything like that but actually it's just that thought that goes into a bit of planning around where that all sits so yeah getting everyone involved and listening to what they're actually saying is my top tip I think next one would be around the flexibility and maintaining that flexibility even if it becomes permanent so that we're always open to revisiting how it's working if we need to change something if something's not quite right something that maybe we thought we could live with at the beginning grows into something that we find really damaging or a huge much bigger risk than we thought then we will keep talking about that too so it's it's not a done deal it's not set in stone now that this is how it will always be just like any workplace, it evolves, it grows. So actually being open and accepting that will happen, I think is a really important factor in a four day week. I would say constantly reviewing how the productivity is not just from what we see going out to clients, but actually that temperature check, the sense check with actually your team is vitally important because there might be some people who actually, you know what, I really want the structure of five days. It's what I'm used to. I don't like having four days we've not experienced that but I have spoken to people who have experienced that so being really open to understanding that some people will want something different and I think maybe what else so that after three is that is it? <laughs> I've got to think of four and five I think being really clear from the outset about what you want to achieve from a four-day week so not just going in thinking, oh, you know, lots of people are talking about it. It's a trending topic on social media. We're just going to try it. Just being really clear about what you perceive that benefit to be and what you want that benefit to be for your business. You know, we were, we were adamant that we wanted to have more time to do the things that fill us with joy. And doing the four-day week was our way of enabling that for everybody around us. And also, my final tip, I think would be being aware of what you are not prepared as a business to compromise on so if there's something that would drop maybe client engagement or client service level or something like that being really clear about what that is with yourselves and with your team I think is the final top tip I've got if you like because then you're protecting the work you're doing for your clients or your customers you're protecting your team and ultimately as the business leader you're protecting your business at that point because ultimately that's still got to happen otherwise you'll be doing a no day week because the business won't exist anymore so you know it's about that balance but yeah encapsulating all of that and I think you're probably on to a winner excellent Thank you so much, Chris. It's been a very fascinating discussion and well done to you and your team for successfully adopting flexible work in a four-day working week. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming on the podcast today. And thank you everyone for listening to us. Stay tuned and let us know if there are any topics that you'd like to hear us discuss more about. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of HR Voices. 
If you have a topic you'd like us to cover or would like to be a guest, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with us on social media or email us at hrvoices at hrindependence.co.uk. Tune in next time.